One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where did you come from? Satan answered the Lord, wandering throughout the earth, to and fro in it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on earth. He is blameless and righteous, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Satan replied, Have you not placed a fence around him, his house, and all that he has? You have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds may spread throughout the land. But now reach out your hand and strike everything he has, and he will certainly curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, then everything he has is in his power, but do not touch the man himself. Then Satan left the presence of the Lord. One day, while Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at their older brother's house, a messenger came to work and said that the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the wise men attacked them and fled with they. They killed the servants with the sword, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said that the fire of God fell from the heavens and burned the sheep and the servants, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said that the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and attacked their camels and fled with them, killing the servants with the sword, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said that his sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine in their elder brother's house, when suddenly a strong wind swept from the desert and hit the four corners of the house, it collapsed on them, and they are dead and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. In this work, Job stood up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In this moment of deep reflection and surrender, Job demonstrated admirable resignation in the face of the trials imposed on him. His action of tearing his robe and shaving his head symbolizes not only mourning and despair, but also a sincere acceptance of the divine plan. By prostrating himself on the ground in worship, he recognizes his own fragility and the Lord's sovereignty over all things. His words, spoken with humility and unshakable faith, echo through the centuries as an example of trust and absolute devotion to God, even in the midst of the most severe adversities. Job understands that everything he possesses, including his own life, is a gift bestowed by the Creator, and he is willing to submit to his will regardless of the circumstances. Thus, in his declaration that he came naked into the world and will depart in the same way, Job recognizes the transience of earthly life and the impermanence of material riches. His unwavering faith in God's justice and goodness stands as a beacon of hope to all who face tribulations inspiring them to trust in the divine plan and surrender completely to the Lord's love and mercy. Satan fears mature Christians. Christian maturity is being with God and not throwing tantrums when God doesn't say yes to your prayers. Christian maturity is saying, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Christian maturity is even if my heart is broken because of the situation, I will remain with God. There are people who are listening and are actively angry with God. They are so angry with God because He didn't answer their prayers, thinking that God doesn't love them anymore. God has not abandoned you. He will never leave you. The three young Hebrews had no idea whether God would deliver them, but they believed in God regardless of the outcome of the situation. That is biblical faith the faith of Job. There is another gospel that is in the churches today, and that is the profitable gospel, in the sense that people no longer come to God because of who He is, but rather because He can do for them. Lives. This is profitable faith. The theology behind profitable faith is to believe in God and He will make you rich, He will make you 100% healthy, and all of His wildest dreams can come true. This is wrong because the truth is that God can in fact make you rich, He can. God can make you healthy, He can. God can make your wildest dreams come true, He can. He has the power and the ability to do this, but one, is He willing to do it? And two, 
Does he promise this to all believers? Profitable faith-centered theology is all about what God can do and not who he is. You hear sermons called, 10 Steps to God to Make You Richer, for ways to live the perfect life God wants for you, two biblical steps to a prosperous life, and so many Christian faiths are rooted in profit-making faith. They claim, I believe in God because he answers my prayers. What if God doesn't answer his prayer? Would you still believe him? Or they claim, I believe in God because he healed me when I was sick. What if God didn't heal you when you were sick? Would you still believe him? True biblical faith is not centered on what God does for you, but rather on who God is. If you know him, you know that he is the only true God who deserves to be praised and worshipped. No matter what life has in store for you, I will believe in him. Whether it's rain or shine, I will believe in God. This is the faith of the three young Hebrews. This is the faith of Job. You know you're on God's side. You know you love him. You know he is your heart. You know you want to please him. Even when you sin, your heart hurts because all you want to do is please him. And today I want you to rest in your relationship with the Lord. Satan tries to paint God as a strange deity who is millions of miles away. He tries to paint the picture of God as being a deity who is looking at you and waiting for the first instance where you don't live a perfect life and then cuts you off. Like your son, what kind of father would God be if he did that? The Bible describes God as love. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Hear me clearly. Satan cannot change the fact that God loves you. But what Satan can do, and what he does is try to change your perception of God's love. I repeat once again, hear me clearly. Satan cannot change the fact that God loves you. But what Satan can do, and what he does is try to change your perception of God's love. He tries to make you feel that one day God loves me, and the next day he doesn't. One day he loves me, and the next day God doesn't love me. That's not God. He loves you. Rest in the security of the Lord God Almighty. God is telling you today, I love you, I love you, I love you. Satan fears those who know that God loves them. Satan fears those who walk faithfully and rightly with Almighty God. Satan fears those who know that nothing negative in my life will happen unless God allows it to happen to me. Satan fears mature Christians, and that's what Satan fears, mature Christians. Christians who can go through the fires of life and still be faithful. Satan fears those who are not saints who are groaning and whining. Do you know who the whining and whining saints are? They are those who, at the first sign of trouble, begin to believe, oh, God doesn't love me anymore. The whining and whining saints are not mature Christians. Satan fears mature Christians. What is a mature Christian? A mature Christian is someone who understands that God is not a man. He doesn't love you one minute and the next he hates you. A mature Christian understands that God is not Santa Claus or a genie in a bottle that you can rub three times and tell him, I want you to do this for me. Mature Christians understand that God deserves to be praised and worshipped for who he is. Mature Christians live life by the motto of Job, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When God answers my prayer, blessed be the name of the Lord. When God does not answer my prayer, blessed be the name of the Lord. When God gives me what I have asked for in prayer, blessed be the name of the Lord. When God allows negative things to happen in my life, blessed be the name of the Lord. When God protects me from negative things, blessed be the name of the Lord. Mature Christians bless the name of the Lord in any situation they face, come what may. A mature Christian avoids evil, they abort him, just like Job. He lived a life against evil. This is mature Christianity. Mature Christians do not look at this life, their eyes are on eternity. Your eyes are not on the here and now. They understand that even a hundred years on this earth are a drop in the ocean compared to eternity. Mature Christians understand that God loves them and God will not leave them or forsake them. The Bible clearly states that God never abandons or abandons his people. Mature Christians understand this. Look at Job. He had lost everything, but God never abandoned or forsook Job in Job's testing. Even though he mourned and pondered what the hell was going on, he remained faithful to God and did not curse him. 
He couldn't understand why the God he loved, the God he was faithful to, would let all these things happen to him. He even went so far as to state in Job, chapter 13, verse 15, he says, Though he slay me, yet will I put my hope in him. Job could not think of any sin he had committed to cause this drastic change and cause all of this, despite his friend's continual insistences that he must have done something very bad, despite the fact that his wife encouraged him to curse God. But in the end, God reveals himself to Job, shows that he loves him and never stopped loving him, and in the end, restores everything he had. Satan fears mature Christians who understand that God loves them and God will not leave them or forsake them.